Welcome to Capitol Hill, a neighborhood that's as diverse and vibrant as the people that call it home. With an eclectic mix of art, politics, and food, it's really got it all. From the street performers and food trucks to the high-end restaurants and boutiques, Capitol Hill is really a food lover's paradise, a shopper's dream, and a art lover's heaven. But what really sets Capitol Hill apart is its unique and diverse characters. This is a neighborhood that's fiercely independent and loyal to its traditions. And as you walk the streets, you can't help but be struck by the creativity and the energy of the people here. The views of the city skyline are breathtaking and the murals adorning the walls are a feast for the senses. But as much as Capitol Hill is a celebration of the arts and cultures of the city, it's also a place with a deep political history. This is a neighborhood that's been at the forefront of many important social movements, from LGBTQ rights to environmental activism to protesting police brutality. And yet, despite all of its political history, Capitol Hill still manages to maintain a strong sense of community. Whether you're grabbing a coffee at one of the many cafes or browsing through one of the local bookstores, you'll feel the passion and determination of the people who call this place home. We should have shared. So join me as we explore a neighborhood that's both unique and fascinating, and it's really a true gem of the Pacific Northwest. One of the first things that strikes me about Capitol Hill is its energy. This is a neighborhood that never really seems to sleep with people out and about at all hours of the day and at night. Just walk down Broadway, the main drag of the neighborhood, and you'll find a mix of college students, artists, musicians, and tech workers all rubbing shoulders. Everyone's here for a different reason, but they all seem to share a certain spirit of adventure and creativity. I'm stopping off at Real Fine, which is a great coffee shop. And um, we're just not quite cool enough to know all of the good spots in Capitol Hill. So leave a note, leave a comment down below about where you like to go for a truly excellent cup of coffee. This is a neighborhood that's seen its fair share of changes over the years. Once known for its gritty music scene and counterculture, it's now complete with craft coffee shops, artisanal bakeries, and farm-to-table restaurants. Oops, that's my Amazon cart. Here's the lowdown on this neighborhood. Starting down on the south side, we have a lot of great places to hang out and eat or drink on the Pike Pine Corridor, like Terra Plata, Salt and Straw, Poquitos, Ray Gun Lounge. Cal Anderson is always a good place to play some basketball, softball, I think there's ping pong tables here, or you can just lay in the sun with your dog. I helped someone buy a townhouse across the street a couple years ago. It's a nice spot, but you have to be prepared for it to be a little busy. Light rail is super easy to get on right over here, and Broadway has a good grocery store, more restaurants like Olmstead, Rondo, and Don't Yell at Me. Up the hill a little is another hub of restaurants, a hospital, and quieter streets if you want that off of 15th. And all of these houses over here are cool craftsman places, little bungalows, and a lot of townhouses. Volunteer Park has some of the best views of the city, a fun water tower that I love to climb on a nice day, and the Asian Art Museum is just stunning. And just off the park are some of the coolest houses in the city. You know, the big old mansions that dignitaries and CEOs live in. Take a walk down the tree-lined streets of this neighborhood and you'll see everything from grand old Victorian homes to sleek modern high-rises. There's stately mansions with sweeping porches and intricate woodwork. Their owners bask in the glory of a bygone era. And then there's these quirky, colorful bungalows and cottages, their gardens overflowing with wildflowers and herbs. But that's just the beginning. Capitol Hill is also home to a range of apartment and condo buildings from towering complexes with all the amenities to these cozy little walk-ups with just a few units. Some of these buildings have been around for decades, while others are brand new. They're designed to appeal to young urbanites who flock to this neighborhood. This one here is a studio condo that costs $550,000, but you can find a one bedroom condo for anywhere between three and 600,000, I'd say, and a two bedroom will run you somewhere between five and 900,000. There's a lot of apartments around here and you could spend anywhere between um, maybe like $1,500 to $4,000. It's a wide range, but I'd say that the average apartment right now in Capitol Hill is going for about $2,200 a month for a two-bedroom. Cute. 
We've been wanting to come in here to Rubenstein's Bagels for at least a year now because it's right across the street from our doctor, but we always seem to be coming in for an emergency, so it's not like appropriate to stop for a bagel on the way to, you know, urgent care. So, we're here today. Is it Rubenstein or Rubenstein? I've been craving bagels because I watch all these New York vloggers on TikTok and they eat amazing looking bagels every single day. Except it's like $20 a bagel there. If you're looking to make a home in Seattle, or anywhere really, send me a message and we'll get started together. I run a small real estate team in the Seattle area, and I'm connected with a lot of really great realtors around the country if you're looking for a referral closer to you. We're here now at this sweet little townhouse that we've just listed for sale. It's only two blocks away from the bustling shops and restaurants on 15th. It's a gem of a property. Seriously, just send me a message or sign up for an apartment below. I spend most of my time either behind the computer, looking at homes with clients, or in my garage building something. I love these layouts for people that want a really flexible living condition. By the front door here, we have a bathroom and a bedroom, a living kitchen space on the second level, and you can sleep on the top floor with this killer view of the mountains. And then I guess you'll use the extra bedroom as like a work from home space. You can host your family, you can rent it out to a roommate, you can store your backpacking gear, or I don't know, display your mug collection or something. Anyways, 845,000, two bedrooms, 1.75 bathrooms, there's a rooftop deck, beautiful mountain views. It's an easy lifestyle here with very little maintenance and an unbeatable 95 walk score. This neighborhood has seen its fair share of challenges over the years, from the turmoil of the 90s to the ever-evolving gentrification of today. What truly sets it apart is its unwavering commitment to the LGBTQ movement. Since the 1980s, Capitol Hill has been at the forefront of the fight for equality and acceptance. Back in the 90s, when discrimination and violence against the LGBTQ movement were rampant, Capitol Hill became a safe haven where people could openly express their identities and fight for their rights. It was during this time that several organizations were born to form a united front against discrimination, including the Capitol Hill Community Council, the Lesbian Resource Center, and the Seattle Men's Chorus. And let's not forget about the annual Seattle Pride Parade, which began in 1974 and has since grown into the celebration of love, acceptance, and solidarity. Thousands of people flock to Capitol Hill to participate in and witness this event every year. So yes, the food and drink of Capitol Hill are certainly noteworthy, but what really makes this neighborhood special is the sense of community and resilience that permeates its very being. In many ways, Capitol Hill is a microcosm of Seattle itself, a place of contradictions, creativity, and constant change. It's a neighborhood that's never quite settled, always evolving and reinventing itself, but amongst the eclectic mix of apartments, condos, and townhouses are some of the most gorgeous and imposing homes you'll ever lay eyes on. These mansions with their sweeping staircases, ornate iron gates, and meticulously landscaped gardens speak to a different time in Seattle's history. A time when the city was flush with wealth from its booming logging and shipping industries. And while a lot of these homes have been converted into apartments or repurposed for other uses, their grandeur still remains. They're a testament to the neighborhood's enduring allure, a reminder that even as the city grows and changes around it, Capitol Hill remains a place of beauty, creativity, and individuality. So the next time you find yourself wandering these streets, take a moment to appreciate the mansions that stand tall and proud, silent witnesses to a bygone era of Seattle's past. I could go on and on about Capitol Hill because I feel like there's so much to talk about. I didn't talk about the music scene at all, the origins of Seattle coffee, the homelessness crisis, the chop zone. This video was heavily inspired by Anthony Bourdain. So if it's a little overly dramatic, sorry. Anyways, I think that this neighborhood is a wonderful place to live. There's a lot to do, a lot to look at. It's very pretty. Uh, so if you're thinking about making a home in Seattle, send me a message. Or just stay tuned for more housing and design content from my home in Seattle. Bye.